Summary of the Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov On a cold May morning, the aristocratic Madame Ranovsky, her daughter Anya, and their servants Yasha and Charlotte travel from Paris to the Russian countryside to their family's ancestral farm. A group of friends, family members, and neighbors, including Ranovsky's brother Gayef, her oldest daughter Barbara, and her neighbors Lopakin and Pishchik, are eagerly awaiting their arrival. Ranovsky is happy to be back home after living abroad for five years, but she gets the bad news that if she doesn't find a way to pay off the interest on the estate by the end of August, the property and the large cherry orchard that takes up most of it will be sold to the highest buyer. Lopakin tells Ranovsky to cut down the cherry orchard, split the land into parcels, and rent them out acre by acre to villa residents, or people who want to move up in life. Ranovsky won't listen to this idea. Instead, she gives Pishchik money she doesn't have and thinks back to her painful departure five years ago, which was caused by the death of her youngest child, Grisha, who drowned when he was only seven. As the house comes back to life, the servants Dunyasha and Afikadov deal with an awkward romance, the old butler Furs, who has taken to mumbling to himself, is happy to see his mistress again, Gaev thinks of ways to get money through borrowing and back channels, Barbara wonders if Lopakin, who has been rumored to be thinking about asking her to marry him for months, will ever ask her hand in marriage, and the shabby scholar. In the second act, the workers of the family spend the day in the fields behind the house. Even though the weather is nice and everyone seems to be having a good time, Charlotte, Yasha, Dunyasha, and Afikadov all have their own pain and misery that they can only talk about with each other, and even then, their need to connect and get rid of their private demons seem to be ignored. Dunyasha avoids the suicidal Afikadov and falls in love with the cruel and troubled Yasha instead. Charlotte, the stateless child of circus artists, is sad that she is all alone in the world. After a fancy, and expensive, lunch in town, Ranovsky, Gaev, and Lopakin go back to the farm and spend some time in the fields. Lopakin tells Ranovsky that there are rumors of possible buyers, and he wants her to think again about his plan to cut down the cherry tree, but she won't listen to his vulgar idea. Trofimov, Anya, and Barbara join the group in the field. Trofimov gives a speech about the intellectual and social problems in modern Russia, such as the lazy, snobbish intelligentsia and the lack of honest and decent hard-working people. When a bum comes up to Ranovsky and asks for money, she gives him a valuable gold coin because she doesn't have any smaller bills. Barbara is angry that her mother is giving money to bums when there isn't enough food at home, so she goes home in a huff. The only ones who don't follow her are Anya and Trofimov. Anya tells Trofimov that she used to love the cherry orchard very much, but now she doesn't feel anything when she looks at it. Trofimov thinks this is because Anya has seen how hard it was for generations of unpaid workers to take care of the orchards and is sympathetic to their plight. He tells Anya that she should throw her house keys down the well, and she agrees with excitement. Trofimov says that even though he has had trouble in his life, happiness is coming soon. Barbara tells Anya to come to the house, but she runs away with Trofimov to the river instead. In the third act, it is August, and Ranovsky has planned a fancy dinner party with lots of dancing and a Jewish band of musicians. She planned the party to take her mind off her worries. The auction for the cherry orchard is taking place in a town far away, and Gaev and Lopakin have not yet told her if the property was saved or sold. During the dinner party, the slaves, especially Dunyasha and Afikadov, act like guests, which makes Barbara angry because she wants them to know their place. Ranovsky tells Trofimov all about her bad relationship with her ex-lover, who writes to her almost every day and is like a heavy but beautiful stone around her neck. Trofimov says he is above love, but Ranovsky makes fun of him by calling him a freak for saying he doesn't care about Anya. Gaev finally walks into the living room while crying. Ranovsky asks him what happened at the auction, but he won't tell him. Instead, he goes upstairs to change. Moments later, a happy Lopakin walks into the room. When Ranovsky asks him if the cherry orchard was sold, he says that it was, and when she asks who bought it, he says that he was the top bidder. Lopakin brags about how far he has come in the world, even though he is the son of poor peasants. 
he is excited to build a new life for the middle class on the land where the orchard is now. Anya kneels down in front of Ranovsky and comforts her, telling her that they will soon start a new orchard somewhere even more beautiful. In the fourth and last act, the house is empty and packed up. In the corner of the nursery is a big pile of bags. Ranovsky and her family are getting ready to leave quickly and with tears in their eyes. They are leaving on a train in less than an hour. Lopakin tries to serve champagne to celebrate his ownership of the farm as everyone rushes around in packs at the last minute. Yasha says that Furs has gotten sick and has been taken to the hospital to be treated. As Ranovsky, Gaev, Anya, and Barbara say goodbye to their home, the sound of axes cutting down cherry trees can be heard in the background. Anya asks Lopakin to at least wait until they leave before he and his men start taking apart their family's pride and joy. When Ranovsky and Lopakin are alone, Ranovsky begs him to finally ask Barbara out, and Lopakin agrees. Ranovsky calls Barbara into the room and then goes, leaving the two of them alone. They talk awkwardly about the weather until one of Lopakin's workers calls him outside. He doesn't propose to Barbara, and she breaks down in tears near her bags. Ranovsky helps Barbara calm down and says with a smile that it's time for the whole family to go on a new adventure. Anya and Trofimov are sad to leave the old house, but Ranovsky and Gaev stay inside for a moment longer to say goodbye to their youth and happiness before locking up and leaving. After everyone has left, Furs comes out of the next room looking sick. He was left behind and forgotten. He sits on the couch and thinks about how his life has been a waste. He lies down and looks like he is going to die as the sounds of the tools cutting down the cherry trees near him start up again. About the author Anton Chekhov was born in 1860 in a port town in the south of Russia. As a child, he lived with an abusive father who put the family in debt and was a powerful figure whose cruelty inspired many of Chekhov's plays and short stories. Chekhov moved to Moscow in 1879 to go to medical school. He had a big family that was having trouble making ends meet, so he wrote and published satirical short stories and sketches to make money. Chekhov made more money as a writer than as a doctor, even though for most of his life he thought of himself first as a doctor. In the middle of the 1880s, Chekhov was sick, but he didn't tell many people that he had tuberculosis. When he went to the Ukraine to get better in the late 1880s, he was asked to write a play, and his writing career took off. Chekhov had a lot of success for a long time. As his health got worse in the late 1890s, Chekhov bought a country house in Yalta, where he wrote some of his most famous works, such as Three Sisters, The Cherry Orchard, and the short story The Lady with the Dog. Chekhov died in July 1904 from effects from tuberculosis, just six months after the Cherry Orchard opened at the Moscow Art Theatre. It was his last play. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.